My job was not to get money from the people. My job as a minister was to get money to the people. For the last 50 years, Brother John Avanzini has been bringing the revelation of biblical economics around the globe. But prosperity has to do with what has you. He has written over 50 books, helping people to understand and apply principles of kingdom wealth in their finances. From the very beginning, the first thing he puts is this seed. Everything duplicates, mm. everything duplicates. Mm. A harvest never occurs without a man involved. When I walked into that room and heard the preaching and saw the move of the Holy Ghost, I realized that I did not have that. And so it drove me to my knees in my room, just mm. drove, man, I say drove me almost bluntly into the floor when I walked in the door and just, God, I must have what these men have. Mm. I saw a light coming and all of a sudden the voice of God spoke to me out of that light and said, I'm going to give you a message mm. to the world on my plan for their finances. Because every time you put your money in that plate, Come on. you've laid yeah. down part of your life because yeah. you had to give your life to get that money. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the money is such a spiritual thing. Mm. People's faith decide how long something's going to take. Yeah. Mm. You, wow. You, wow. You, you, you. Welcome back to Discussions with Brother John Avanzini. And it's such an honor, sir, to have you here again. And uh, we have Jason here also, your grandson. We were just talking on the break. Uh, you know, it's such a powerful session of, of encountering God. You know, um, that's something that really touched my heart when I heard you share the story years ago, because we need to have that encounter with God. We all have a message. We all yes. have a distinctive that is there. And, you know, yes. we can study. We go to Bible seminary. I know you're a student of the word, always studying. But that information has to be tied with the Holy Spirit yes. to, to birth something. Yes. And all of us need to, to get a hold of that. And I think that's why this message has been so, so powerful. It wasn't just something you pulled out to preach, but it was something that you encountered God with yeah. and out of a hunger to bring something to the people. And, and this message has been, you know, many times distorted, abused in the body yeah, of Christ. Sure. Um, but, you know, as we come back to America, it's so necessary because God wants to get money to his people. And the lie of the enemy is that preachers trying to take people's money yeah. to meet a need. Yeah. But that's not it. God wants to bring money to his people. And you know, when you were in Nigeria, let's go back there a little bit. I, I remember you told the story about the encounter, um, but, but that part you, you shared about how after the meeting you saw that big offering, oh, what was the struggle? Can, can you share that? Hey there. Before we dive deeper, I've got something really interesting to share with you about this channel. Take a look at this. This is the percentage of viewers versus those that have subscribed. Now, if you have found this video valuable or any of our content, we would really love your support. You can do that by hitting the subscribe button and dropping us a comment below. Your support means the world to us. It fuels our ability to keep delivering to you valuable content and making each video better than the last. Thanks for being a part of this journey. Let's get back to the video. I saw that uh, move of God in the room and then I heard Dr. Cirillo say, stop the, stop the giving. And it, it, you know, you can take that message either way. He's, he's excited that it was more than enough or he's upset that it's too much. Yeah. So immediately my spirit dropped and I just thought, my, what, what's going to happen to these people? Maybe I've overdone this thing and, and uh, some of them will have, and the devil started then because if, if, if you'll start a conversation, the devil will carry <laughs> it on. Finish it, yeah. <laughs> if you'll get negative, you'll carry it on. And so as I was in the car riding back, I was seeing the people uh, just as they were going out, I was thinking, how are they going to get home? How are they going to eat tonight? And so I just, that night I just laid in the floor and the devil just rode me like a goat. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, a, it was shameful. Mm -hmm. it, it, anybody would open that door, it would have been shocking, this, the, the trauma I was in. Yeah. And the next morning when I got up, I was really wanting to get that morning done and get on my way home. So I come and knock on the door and it was Joseph Chuk and Joseph had been my driver and the car that he had, that he drove me in was less than stellar. It had a brake problem. And so I'm, uh, he, he comes up there and he says, come see, come see. Mm -hmm. And I said, Joseph, I don't want to see anything. I want to just see my house. I want to see, I want to see the airplane door. I want to get home. He said, no, come see, come see. 
And so he walked out and he put his hand on a new Toyota automobile. And I said, well, thank God they got us a decent car to ride in. <laughs> and he said, no, Brother John, this is my car. Wow. My uncle, who's a Muslim, married to my uh, mother's sister, I believe it was mother's sister, said, uh, he, uh, he said, I don't know why I'm doing this. When I was leaving the house, he said, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm giving you this car. This car is yours, Joseph. Yeah. And That's so we're nice. riding in this car, and I'm thinking, wow. And he's telling me, he said, I gave everything I had. I gave and promised everything I had at home. Yeah. He said it was, he said, I just prostrated myself. But now I have this car. I told, I told God I needed proper transportation. Here's his car. Praise well, when I got there, people were running alongside the car, knocking on the windows. And uh, they were, they were uh, wanting to roll down the window, but I, I, I didn't roll the windows down. But when we did stop, they just started coming with stories of how God had met their need. Mm. And it was, it was just uh, unbelievable that that kind of victory came that quick. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, rapidly. And, and people's faith decide how long something's going to take. Yeah. Mm. You, wow. You, you, wow. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. For instance, uh, I've asked the question many times. I say, how many of you here have ever uh, had a car payment that you had to make? Mm -hmm. And uh, you asked God, you couldn't make it, you couldn't find the money, and, and you just got before the Lord and you asked him, please help me with this car payment, and it came. Mm -hmm. And the question is, why didn't you just ask him to pay the whole car off? Wow. We get what we <laughs> asked for. I mean, right. if, the, if wow. the money's moving, yeah. <laughs> it's not like he's got a... A little pinch purse that he's trying to bless mm -hmm. people out of. He could have just paid the whole car off. Woo. Yeah. So, uh, but from from that to uh, uh, that time, uh, oh, and let me give you something that connects with that. 25, 30 years later, I'm in Cahoga Falls, uh, Iowa, I think it is, uh, but there's a city, Cahoga Falls. And I teach this message and I go into that. I taught, teach from, the time of that uh, uh, in, in Nigeria, whenever God spoke to me, right on out through that uh, victory in the, in, the, in the church that day. And uh, a black man stood up. And uh, he was Ibu. I, I could tell immediately from this profile, he was Ibu. And uh, that had taken place. Abba is Ibu, is the, is the home nation of the Ibu people. And so... I thought, oh boy, here we go. Yeah. What's going on? He said, I was there mm -hmm. at that meeting. Yes. And uh, I asked the pastor, who is this? He said, he's a prominent doctor here in the city. Mm -hmm. And he said, I had, uh, uh, he said, I was, uh, I was there in the meeting. I heard this. He said, I have, uh, I had uh, uh, an, an order from God to give the money that I had for my wedding garment. Wow. Mm. And he said, but the man that I owed the money to was in the meeting. I was there <laughs> to pay him the money. And he said, I put the money in. Wow. And he said, uh, as I left, I was walking out and here came the man, very excitedly towards me, the man that made the garment. And so he thought, my, this is going to be an embarrassing moment. The man said, God just spoke in my heart and told me to make you two wedding garments and not to charge you anything. He says he was, on, he was just, he said, this is man 25 years yeah. later standing in wow. the other end of the world about that night, yeah. uh, that day in Abba. Yeah. And so then he goes on and he says, and as I was going out, walking towards the bus, said I saw the front of a fine car. He's called it a fine car. Mm. Uh, pull and then the stop and the window came down. The driver said, are you that young student that has one night at my hotel on the ocean for your honeymoon? He said, wow. yes, yes. He said, you have a week. The whole week will be free. <laughs> God spoke to him. Wow. So, and then several, about a year later, Joseph, I brought him to America yeah. and Joseph came and spoke at several places, told the story about, his car. Yeah. So God just really moved. Yeah. 
And, you know, sometimes when we have a breakthrough, really what happened is something broke in the spiritual atmosphere over the people, and the heaven was opened up. Heaven was, was open. But the slapback is what you hit. You know, you were there praying because the devil's trying oh. to get you to back out of that anointing and the, the, the power of that mm. word in doing it. And so I think, you know, that's something for people watching pastors. We've got to understand that because we all get hit with that. Oh, but, we, we were talking about when I started the church, you know, for six months, we didn't really talk about giving. Because we didn't want people to think it was about that. Mm. But then the Lord rebuked me. Uh -huh. uh, you know, we were talking about the, the widow at Zarephath where the prophet came in and yeah. takes her last meal. Yeah. But that opened the heavens open over yeah. that. So can you speak into that a little bit? Because that's that's the dilemma sometimes that we have what? in backing away from the you message. You know, as, as ministers of the gospel, mm. we will speak some things that we feel are spiritual. Mm. And when we think we're on a spiritual subject, we'll, we'll speak to a man to get saved when we know that when he gets saved, he'll lose his job. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, you just know for sure yeah. he gets saved. He's a bartender. Yeah. He gets saved. He's going to lose his job. Yeah. But it's because it's a spiritual matter. Mm. We say, God, take care of that. Woo. Come on. But then we come to the finances and we don't think it's spiritual. Wow, 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 wow. Wow. And as long as you don't think that the financial, uh, mm. that offering plate, it's the nearest thing to a human sacrifice to take place in 2,000 years in the church. Wow, wow. Because every time you put your money in that plate, come on. you've laid yeah. down part of your life yeah. because you had to give your life to get that money. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, the money is such a spiritual thing. Mm. Man, I mean, any see, if you can't get that in your mind that you are now dealing with a spiritual situation at offering time, you're going to draw back and hesitate mm. and be soulish. Mm -hmm. But really, I mean, if a person takes and comes and says, I gave it all, I don't feel, oh, my God, how are you going to get home? I don't think that at all because they're going to get home. Yeah. yeah. Before they get to the parking lot, they're going to have something's going to happen. They'll get them to the house. Yep. And then something great will be waiting for them at the house. Yep. But if you treat it as carnal, your people will treat it as carnal mm. because like priests, like people. Wow. Yeah. Like priests, and until like it becomes spiritual stuff, mm. you're going to have that balking or that tendency not to lean into it. But I tell you, when I hear someone says, I gave my whole life to God. Well, amen. Well, I just gave all my money to God. Well, amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you say, are you trying to get everybody's money? No, I've got money. I don't need everybody's money. Yeah. But you need yeah. the breakthrough that God will give you in your finances mm -hmm. because it's line upon line and precept upon precept. God teaches that you will not outgive him. Yeah. If you give one, he'll give 30. If you give one, he'll give 60. If you give one, He'll give a hundred. He always is way and gone above, but what's reasonable in his return to you. But if not, if you're not believing that it's going to come back, it's not going to come back. But if you by faith believe, I give it, knowing that God will multiply it back to me, it will come back to you 30 fold, 60 fold, and even a hundred fold. Long as the earth remains. Yeah. Long as the earth remains. The time and harvest will come. But yeah. if we don't have it as a spiritual mm. operation, mm. because that's exactly what the problem is. Yep. That minister, and I, I, I ministered for, for, for many years this way, I thought that the financial part was a natural thing. Mm -hmm. yep. And that I had to have some clever way of presenting a need. Yep. Uh, I remember one time we needed air conditioning in the building, and <laughs> I, I had two big blocks of ice brought out. And whenever the people came in, I was sitting on the ice with a fan and I had a little sign on the ice said, help me get this place air conditioned. Come <laughs> raise the money. But that, you know, it was, it, it was a yeah. natural thing. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't sit there and do like that about salvation. I wouldn't sit yeah. there in a, in a bucket yeah. of blood yeah. and wow. try to get people yeah. saved. Wow. Because I thought that was spiritual. Yeah. But when I realized that money into the offering plate of the church, mm. think about, that. you know, you, you lay your life down for that money. Yeah. You, you you put in 40 hours. They give you back your money in a new form. Yep. It comes back to you in a paper form now or in silver or gold or however you get it. Yep. But now that's your life given back to you. Yep. But it's in a new dimension. Mm. 
Because when you lay down your life to get it, mm. you're one dimension. Mm. But your money comes back. It's omni. It's omnipresent. Wow. wow. Yeah. You can send it all over the world. Yeah. You can you you can use it in this place that place. It you literally it becomes omnipresent. Wow. But when you put that money in that offering plate, it's the nearest thing to a human sacrifice mm. to take place in the church mm. in two thousand years. Mm. Jesus, Jesus. That is good. That is good. <laughs> that is so good. I'm is just that so good blessed. Yes. Oh yes. It, yeah. I'll just add this in there that it, it God absolutely wants His people to prosper. Yes. And that's been something that's been on the heart of God is that people would prosper. But yes. until until there's a revealing of that, yeah. People are operating in darkness. You know, we see darkness and light are are used a lot in Scripture. Yeah. And the dark darkness can have to do with a sin that needs to be brought. But there's another element of darkness and light that I see through Scripture, and that is that darkness has to do with ignorance, and mm-hmm. light has to do with that revelation, yeah. or with knowledge. Mm-hmm. And the enemy is able to operate in darkness. Yeah. So if we have an area of our lives uh, where there's sin taking place, well, the enemy, that's darkness. The enemy can work there. But if we have an area in our life where there's ignorance, where we just don't know that we can be healed, Mm-hmm. Well, then the enemy can operate in there. Yep. If there's an area of our life mm-hmm. that we don't know, you know, I'm ignorant about the fact that God wants me to be successful. Mm-hmm. That area is dark. The enemy can operate in there. Mm-hmm. It's his playground. Mm-hmm. But as soon as light comes to that, Amen. God will absolutely release it. Yep. A couple of scriptures come to mind. One scripture is from uh, it's 2 Corinthians 8, 9. It says, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there's that knowing. Yep. We're bringing it out of the darkness into the light. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. So it's there, and part of what makes uh, my grandfather so uh, unique is that, as he said, there were no books about this. Mm -hmm. There 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 was information, but there wasn't light. There wasn't a revelation brought. And whenever he brought forth 52 books on this subject, the body of Christ is now not operating in darkness in the area of finance. Yeah. But now there's a light that's been brought to it. And, and I think there's such God. a need in the body to do that. You know, you're talking about the light and darkness. You're talking about one dimensional and then the omnidirectional, oh, which is yeah. really bringing us out of the natural and supernatural. supernatural. You know, because when you put that in the plate as that offering heaven opens up that's mm. where the fire of god sure, comes that's what yeah. releases god into our lives and we need to get back to that because so many people in the body of christ so many americans are struggling with debt yeah it, pastors are just trying to meet a need meet the oh. budget every month but that's not how god's called us to live no and so we we need to, we want to see a move of god we need to see the great yeah. awakening yeah. it costs money yeah there needs to be a great awakening in people's finances so they can tell the, the, the testimony of, of the goodness of God. No one Absolutely. listens to a poor man. No. Right? no. <laughs> right. And, and so we That's need to verse. we need that to verse. we need to have that understanding. So we're going to continue to talk about this in the next session and break it down. I'm so excited. Don't don't tune. Share this with somebody so that they can be blessed too. Come on, we need to get this message back. The purity of it and the body of Christ. We have a God who loves us. He wants to do exceedingly abundantly of what we can think or imagine. That we can have our needs. He can bring money to us, but he wants to bring money through us for his kingdom. So we're going to continue the discussion with Brother John in the next episode. Amen.